because it was shot like during the depression. Oh my and god! And so it was scary. Like oh my god. real apples. People were going, oh. Oh, "Did they eat those apples?" There was oh, an uproar. There were riots after the after the screening. Making this up. Okay, <laughs> here we go. Hey everybody, and welcome to Outranked, the trivia show where you win geek cred and not a whole lot else. I'm your host. Chris Mason. Today we're doing a countdown on the top 10 greatest movies of all time. This is it. This is the finale of season one of Outranked. Yes, indeed. Um, as soon as we have a proper trophy, today's winner's name will be engraved or chiseled or scrawled across it in black mark, black sharpie marker, whatever you know we actually do with that trophy. But who will it be? Will it be Liam Shell? who previously won our top 10 horror movies and top 10 iconic movie villains episodes, or will it be Emily Brayton, who outranked her opponents on top 10 superhero movies and top 10 comedies of the 2000s? Welcome to both of you. Thank, Thank you. you. So Liam, uh, you're currently earning your bachelor's degree in film studies. Yep. That makes you a, a tough competitor. But <laughs> if, you, so. if you win, today, the first season of Outranked, will they give you course credit for that? Hopefully. Maybe I'll have to just show them that and then I'll graduate. You get your degree. <laughs> but I if I'm not, if I don't win, then I mean, it's you pretty embarrassing. <laughs> yeah, you fail a class. Uh, Emily, is this the most important moment of your life so far? Yes, I would definitely say that. It's right up there? Oh yeah. Okay, I have a more serious question for you. Are you today prioritizing your personal favorites when you pick or are you giving more weight to films that are like generally considered uh, cinema classics? I think it's a mix. Mm -hmm. um, in some cases, I feel as though I have to take myself out of it, which is upsetting to me. It physically hurts me to leave some of them off that I think I'll have to. You have to be objective. I have to be objective in this case because there are just the best movies out there. You know, your sister was on another episode mm -hmm. and she talked a lot about uh, how important it is to be objective. Or did she say that that's impossible? I can't remember. I guess I wasn't really listening. Anyway, you can go back and watch that episode yourself. Uh, guys, welcome. Thanks for playing. Good luck. The goal of Outranked is to create the ultimate top 10 list, or at least play the game better than your opponent. Our contestants will answer trivia questions, which earn them points and first dibs on populating their lists. Once they've created their personal lists of the top 10 movies of all time, our special guest judge will award some more points as they see fit, and that'll be our winner. Uh, so in 2014, we published a few lists of the top 10 movies by decade, and that culminated in a list of the top 10 movies of all time. That list, including its four honorable mentions, is your list of nominees. Here it is. You'll notice that there are six player picks instead of the usual two. This seems appropriate since it's a pretty subjective and wide open topic, so there's a lot more room for personalization. Okay, right off the bat, anything, what do you guys think of this list? Liam, what do you think? Um, I think it's a little, I don't know, I think it's a little weak, to be honest. A little um, weak. I think there, you could definitely add a lot to it and take, take stuff away. Um, to make it better. Were sure. you part of this list I when it was made? I think I was hired right after, so. Ah, okay. I don't know, maybe I have a bone to pick with some people hmm. that. So <laughs> whatever whatever your list today will be, will be sort of more representative of what it would, what this list would be if we made it today. Is that right? I think so, yeah. Yeah, Emily, any hot takes on this? There's some missing that I think would be uh, upsetting to people. I'm sure you're gonna put them in in your personal picks, right? Maybe. Okay. Maybe. All right, well, here we go. <laughs> Guys, good luck. Round one. Uh, trivia point. Trivia questions are worth five points and one pick. Whoops, sorry. I'm so sorry. I'm preemptive. It well, looks, now you need to answer the question. Yeah. What, I know. What is it? No? Yeah. Okay, Maybe. fine. We won't yeah. do that to you. Question one. Which two films from our list of nominees did Roger Ebert compare to each other by saying that they are both, quote, constructed in such a non-linear way that you could see them a dozen times and not be able to remember what comes next? This is a multiple choice. Here's four, four options. Is it A, Apocalypse Now and Citizen Kane, B, Pulp Fiction and The Godfather, C, Citizen Kane and Pulp Fiction, or D, The Godfather and Apocalypse Now? That's Who? You. Who does it say? It's you. It says that was you. Phone. What? Oh, oh, it was the same app. time. I'm so sorry. I don't know. Who rung in? Jeremy? Emily? It was me. Kay. Oh. Emily. I'm going to go with A. A. Apocalypse Now and Citizen Kane both had a nonlinear structure. Incorrect. <sighs> Liam? Citizen Kane and Pulp Fiction? Citizen Kane and Pulp Fiction is correct. The others were a little bit more linear, uh, so that should have been a clue. Liam, you get five points and the first pick. 
Um, I will take Citizen Kane. Citizen Kane, how appropriate, Classic. how appropriate. Now, uh, do you really believe that that's one of the greatest movies, or yeah, is this like? Yeah, I mean, I remember like first year film film class, I remember I was like blown away by like, just like how like ahead of his time it was, which is crazy. I mean, you kind of have to like watch it in the mindset of like that era, and it's mm -hmm. like, so good. Nice, that's okay, true. good. Emily? All right, I'm going to go with the Godfather. The Godfather. Okay, I don't know why I said it like that. Question two, <laughs> uh, you can ring in at any time here, all right? In, 2000, in 2016, Nike released shoes that were originally seen nearly 30 years prior in which movie? Was it A, Back to the Future? B, Back to the Future 2? C, Back to the Future 3? Or D, Total Recall? Emily. Back to the Future Part 2. It was Back to the Future Part 2. Man, you know, I wouldn't have gotten that. I would have said Back to the Future because I didn't pay that much attention <laughs> to that. Uh, well good. done. Well Thank done. You. Okay, Thank so uh, they actually did a limited release and auctioned off, uh, auctioned them off to raise money for the Michael J. Fox Foundation. I didn't know it was Nike. I thought it was uh, Adidas. I guess. Mm -mm. It was Nike. Nike. Yep, there you go. That's, yeah. that's the question I should have asked. Emily still would have won, though. Okay, Emily, five <laughs> points for you. Five, five. You get a pick. Okay, I'm going to go with. Psycho. Psycho. That's not crazy. Yeah. I'll go with Apocalypse Now. Apocalypse Now. Another one that I feel like you're much more likely to have seen that movie if you went to film school. Yeah, mm. absolutely. Yeah, and Psycho so. too. Yeah. Did you did you have a professor that made you watch the shower scene over and over? I yeah. Well, there was that, and then the week after we watched the remake, which is not so good. Yeah. <laughs> Vince Vaughn though, young Vince Vaughn. Yeah. yeah. I would have skipped that class. Mm. Okay. Uh, we're tied up at five. Here's the third question in the first round. Okay. Uh, this is the visual question now. You've seen their faces and you've loved their work in some of your favorite movies, but you just can't remember their names. Who are these? Oh, that guy actors. Is it A, oh Clark Gregg, you bring an A time here. Is it A, Clark Gregg, David Paymer, Nestor Carbonell? B, Eric Stoltz, Bob Gunton, Nestor Carbonell? C, Clark Gregg, Bob Gunton, Eric Stoltz? Or D, David Paymer, Clark Gregg, James Cromwell? Liam? It's B. B, Eric Stoltz, Bob Gunton, Nestor Carbonell is correct. Oh, yeah. Is correct for the win, for the win. Those shots are from Pulp Fiction, Shawshank Redemption, and The Dark Knight. I think the only one I knew was Eric Stoltz. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. So you just like bounce around that one. Of Almost Marty nice. McFly. Yeah, I can never remember any of those guys' names. <laughs> um, okay, Liam. I'll go with Casablanca. Casablanca. You're really going old school here. I don't think you have anything that was released after. Apocalypse Love Now is like in the middle. Mm. It's timeless, though. Yeah, I guess. timeless. Yeah. That's true. Emily? Pulp Fiction. Pulp Fiction, there's one of the newer ones. All right, great. Um, so Emily, you picked that third. Do you really think it's like one of your, will it be one of your top three, do you think? No. No, but it's you picked not. a third. Okay, mm -hmm. interesting. Okay, so we got the personal picks. Okay, mm -hmm. I, I think Emily has like a secret game plan in her head. She's been very <laughs> circumspect about what I'm she's really, planning really on doing today. I'm really cryptic about this. Okay, so that's the end of round <laughs> two. Uh, Liam, you're up 10 to five. Uh, stakes are doubled in round two. Questions are now with 10 points and two picks. Okay, this, and this is a player pass round. You'll each have the opportunity to choose to play or pass on a question. I'll give you the category you decide. Emily, this one's for you. The category is international mistranslations. Ooh. Player pass. I'm gonna pass. You're gonna pass. Okay, yeah. Liam, this goes to you. Often. Movie titles need to be adapted for their international versions, and when you translate those titles back into English, the results are pretty weird. I need you to identify the original English title of these oddly translated versions. Okay, here's a hint. Not all of these are on the list of nominees, but they are all critically acclaimed. Okay, you have 30 seconds ready on the timer. You need three out of five. Okay, time will begin when I read the first question. Number one. If you leave me, I delete you. Uh, oh. You can pass. Oh, Eternal Sunshine and Spotless Mind. Malkovich's Hole. Uh, being John Malkovich? Toy General Mobilization. Uh, Toy Story? 17 year old girl's medical chart. Oh, I don't know. The Boy Who Drowned in Chocolate Sauce. Uh, <laughs> Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory. Okay, and that's time. You got it in under time. Okay, let's Beautiful. review. Uh, if you leave me, I delete you. Took you a little while, but you came up with Eternal Sunshine of the Spotless Mind. That is good. That I was is gonna correct. Say her or 
Mm. But I guess her doesn't really make much sense. That <laughs> that was well done. That was uh, that was the original. That was the translation of the Italian version. Uh, Malkovich's Hole, being John Malkovich. Malkovich's Hole was the Japanese title. Uh, Toy General Mobilization. It was the Chinese Chinese title of Toy Story. So you got that one correct too. That's three for five. <laughs> Those are the ones you need. Let's see how you did with the other ones though. Um, Seventeen-year-old girl's medical chart. That was girl interrupted in Japan. I was, oh. I think I it was like on to my tongue. I just, close. Ah, yeah. you were actually consider, yeah. considering that. Wow. Uh, the boy who drowned in chocolate sauce was Willy Wonka in the Chocolate Factory, the 1971. It's pretty specific. It's adaptation. one scene in the movie. Right. <laughs> okay, great. Well done, Liam. You get 10 you. points for that. You're up 20 to five and two <sighs> picks. Um. I'll take, ooh, I'll take The Wizard of Oz. Wizard of Oz. And I'll take... You can pick them all. Um, <laughs> yeah. Uh, I'll go Star Wars. Star Wars. Empire Strikes Back is the one that's on there, right? Yeah. Wizard of Oz is like one of the few uh, movies on there that was actually a box office bomb. Like mm -hmm. it was not successful. It stood the test of time. Almost equally, if not more, than most of these movies. And cool. It's older, so I think it. That is fits. fair. Right on. Okay, Emily, your okay. two picks. Okay, I'm gonna go with Gone with the Wind. Gone with the Wind. And hmm, Back to the Future. Uh, due to Claire, Back to the Future. Hell, think... surprise. Uh, okay, here we go. <laughs> Next question. Final question. In fact, secondary characters is the category. Liam, this goes to you. Do you want to play or pass? Secondary characters. I'll pass. Pass. Emily, <laughs> this is all on you now. Okay. This is gonna be the difference between ending this game at 30 to five or 15 to 20. Mm -hmm. This is gonna be crucial, I think. Okay, oh boy. here we go. Oh boy. For each of these characters, tell us which set cinematic universe they're from. Is it Lord of the Rings, Star Wars, or Wizard of Oz? Ooh. Okay, you have 60 seconds. Mm -hmm. You need uh, eight out of 10. Okay. Okay. Question begins. Uh, timer begins when I read the, read the thing. Okay. <laughs> Number one. Wampa. Uh, Star Wars. Angry Apple Tree. <laughs> Wizard of Oz. IG88. Star Wars. Gothmog. Uh, Lord of the Rings. Balloon Ascensionist. <laughs> uh, Wizard of Oz. Emerald City Manicurist. Wizard of Oz. Rosie Cotton. Uh. Wizard of Oz? Bosk. Star Wars. Dengar. Lord of the Rings? Grimbald. Lord of the Rings. That's it. Okay. <laughs> uh, number one, you said, Wampa, you said Star Wars. That is correct. Nothing. Angry Apple Tree. Wizard of Oz, you said. That is correct. IG-88, you said Star Wars. That is correct. Uh, Gothmog, you said Lord of the Rings. That is correct. You're five for five. Um, or sorry, four for four. Mm. Balloon Ascensionist, you said. Uh, Wizard of Oz, of course, that's correct. Emerald City Manicures, Wizard of Oz, of course. Uh, Rosie Cotton, you said Wizard of Oz. Lord of the Rings. Mm. I believe that's the girl that um, uh, Sam. Sam ends up marrying. Thank right, you. of course. Yep. Of course. Um, uh, Bosk, you said uh, Star Wars, that is correct. Dengar. You said Lord of the Rings. That is incorrect. No. Okay. Grimbald. You said Lord of the Rings. Liam, was she correct? I don't know. <laughs> She's correct. It? It's Lord of the Rings. You win that one. Oh. Well done. Oh. Well done. Okay, you get 10 points. So it's 15 to 20. This game is still <clears throat> close. Let's get those uh, last two picks from the, mm. from the pool for both of you. Okay, I'm gonna go Shawshank Redemption. Ooh, it's a personal fave. Uh, I love it. Mm. Um, and Lord of the Rings. Let's and do Lord that. of the Rings. All right. Lord of the Rings is good to you. Me. You'll be good to it. Mm -hmm. Speaking of good to it, Liam. I will guess I'll have to take uh, On the Waterfront and Dark Knight. On the Waterfront and Dark Knight. What do you think of On the Waterfront, really? Uh, I mean, I haven't seen it. <laughs> oh, okay, well. <laughs> but um, that settled it. I mean, Marlon Brando, you can't go wrong. Uh, well, not at that I mean, point you in can. his career. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> not at that point, point in his career, <laughs> solid. Okay, yeah. uh, guys, there's one more thing to do. No, there's mm. two more things. First, mm. player picks. Player picks. Oh. Uh, Emily. Okay. You're up. So I have. Basically rounded out what I feel were the missing directors mm. of the list. So I have Alien, 
I have 2001 A Space Odyssey and Goodfellas. Ooh, nice. nice. Not the Scorsese one I go with, but. Fine. Which Scorsese one would you go with? Raging Bull? I'd probably Pro? go Taxi Driver. Taxi Driver, okay. 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 That's another list of its own, like best Scorsese movies. But, but Raging Bull, I mean. Yeah, awesome. one mm -hmm. or the other. Yeah. Um, so I, I guess I went a bit different. I found, I realized that there's nothing from outside of the US on here. Ooh. <laughs> so I went uh, Seven Samurai. Okay. Um, Good stuff. Yeah. Uh, Good to Bad the Ugly. Nice. And um, Mulholland Drive, which I mean, oh, one of those is only outside of the US, but. Of course, you're a film studies person <laughs> putting Mulholland Drive, Drive on. Drive, that was a wild card. <laughs> wild, a little wild card. Only a, only a film studies student would, would pull that out, I think. Mm -hmm. um, but well done, well done. Okay guys, now there's one more thing before you rank your lists. Kay. Liam, you're in the lead. 20 to 15, I think I know the answer to this, but do you want to spend 15 of those points, steal something from Emily's list, put it on yours, sticker with something from your list? I think I'm gonna stay. <laughs> All right, yeah, that's what I thought. Man, the swap is kind of useless. I think we should just drop it. It's not, <laughs> not fun, no one's doing it. Um, okay, so no swaps. You've got your 10 picks, but it's not a list yet. You need to rank this. I'm gonna give you a second to do that, but first, let's meet our special guest judges. That's right, more than one. Special guest judges today will come out and, and, and seal their fates. Our judges are Ashkan Carbus Frushin and Christine Vulieris. They are the publisher and editor-in-chief, respectively, of WatchMojo.com. They've been here since the beginning. They are the king and queen atop our mountainous library of top 10 lists, our bosses. And so who better to judge the final lists? Uh, welcome, Christine and Ash. You can clap for your, your bosses. That's cool. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. You are. <laughs> I'm blushing already. All right. All right. So uh, guys, you can go ahead and rank. I'm going to chat okay. with these guys while you do that. You've seen thousands and thousands of uh, top 10 lists uh, go through our digital doors. What makes a great top 10 list for you guys? I think it's got to have the right mix of it being subjective, where you're kind of saying, okay, we're going to have certain criteria in there to yeah. stir up the uh, emotions, but it's got to be objective at the end. It's got to be something that a viewer could say, look, I may disagree, but it holds water, it makes sense, I think. And then you got to play off nostalgia and things that you're passionate about. And then I think there you have a, a winning list. And I know we're doing all time. Yeah. So you have to have all the decades. So it's important to you that like all the eras are represented? Yes. What about like, all the genres or all the directors. Any, anything like that important to you for this list? Um, I mean, there tends to be, when it comes to top movies, I think generally speaking, you're gonna have more probably dramas, I think, than uh, comedies or horror. Uh, but that said, I think you gotta know your audience. So I think if we have a community that's really into, um, you know, comedies as well or horror, then you might wanna throw them a bone, so to speak, and, and represent that as well. Um, but I think ultimately, because so much of a movie involves not just the, the story, but the characters and acting, I think you gravitate more towards drama. Okay, well said. You guys ready? I think so. I think so. I think you are Are you guys too. ready? This is going <laughs> to carry a lot of weight. Well, <laughs> so, so here's how it's going to go. We're going to give each of these guys one minute each to pitch you their lists, okay? Uh, and then you each have 25 points, both of you, to distribute however you see fit, however you think is fair. Through the magic of top 10 list making, here's your lists. Liam put The Dark Knight, On the Waterfront, Mulholland Drive, The Empire Strikes Back, Wizard of Oz, Seven Samurai, The Good, The Bad, and The Ugly, Apocalypse Now, Casablanca, and Citizen Kane. Emily, Lord of the Rings, The Return of the King, Back to the Future, Alien, Shawshank Redemption, Pulp Fiction, Goodfellas, 2001 A Space Odyssey, Psycho, Gone with the Wind, The Godfather. I'm seeing a lot of nodding yeah. from Ash and Christine. Any 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 thoughts right off the bat? Any hot takes? It's gonna be hard. I mean, Emily, I see, is a fan of 1994 movies with Shawshank Redemption <laughs> and Pulp Fiction, which are two awesome movies, along with Forrest Gump. That you know, trilogy of movies from that year that I that I love. Godfather is a classic. One of my favorites. Uh, Liam. You have one minute okay. to, to tell them why your list of the best movies is the best list of the best movies. Go for it. So I think, I mean, at first glance, mine kind of looks a bit more wild card than Emily's does. She's, hers is a bit kind of more comic booky. Well, not comic booky, but like more like uh, genre based, I guess. Um, but I mean, Citizen Kane is like undeniably everyone unanimous, unanimous acclaim, um, considered the, the greatest. Um, Casablanca also, another classic from that in that period. Um, Apocalypse Now, I mean, Prince Ford Coppola, he's like the, the, a genius. I mean, Apocalypse Now was like one of the biggest movies ever. Um, Get the Bad of the Ugly, I mean, I, Clint Eastwood, 
one of the best westerns, probably if probably the best. Um, Sam Seven Samurai, I chose my player one of my player picks because um, I tried to get some like international flavor on there. Um, Wizard of Oz, classic. Empire Strikes Back, I mean, Star Wars, like, I don't really need to say anymore. Mulholland Drive, um, considered by almost everybody to be the greatest movie from 2000s, um, critically acclaimed. On the Waterfront, uh, another along the lines of Casablanca, Sips of Cain, I think it like rounds off the... Time. Oh, um, The Dark Knight, I had Time's to, up. Had 10. <laughs> uh, Christine, you kind of raised your eyebrows at yeah. Mulholland Drive. Yeah. I, I, what did he say? The best movie the, uh, of two thousands? There's some sort of what he said. That where it was. Hey, like that this one. is not your time <laughs> to talk, my friend. You're on borrowed time now. <laughs> yeah. All I know is that Christine yeah. wasn't too sure yeah. about that one. Yeah. Yeah. Vincent, that, uh, we'll, all right, we'll next, see how that plays out. Yeah. Batter up, Emily. Next. You've got one minute. Okay. So. In terms of my list, I feel like it mixes a good amount of nostalgia and critically acclaimed. In terms of Lord of the Rings and Back to the Future, they're both beloved trilogies and really do help to say that the first movie can be the best and the last movie can help round out and be the best as well. Alien, obviously one of Ridley Scott's best films. Shawshank Redemption is a classic. Morgan Freeman is great. Uh, Pulp Fiction is not my favorite Tarantino film, but still one of the best ones. Goodfellas, obviously amazing ensemble cast, 2001, shows very amazing concept. Psycho, obviously Hitchcock is a titan of a director. Gone with the Wind is a classic romance story. And The Godfather, of course, has all the acting and directing to bolster it in the world. All right, so first of all, rest assured no one's getting fired. It's not <laughs> oh that God. kind of a show. All right, so you, we each get 25 points. Yeah. Do you want to start off? Said. Uh, first of all, I love, I love the smell of a top 10 list in the morning, so, <laughs> so I, I know how I'm going to divvy up the points. All right, well, oh, before we get to points, though, oh, no. <laughs> is there anything that looks out of place here? Anything too high, too low? Anything that strikes you? I mean, look, there is, what's different, what's cool about this is there's obviously more of a, you know, personal take, right? So, I mean, I'm sure, you know, maybe Liam will take into consideration that, yeah, like, Citizen Kane is always, like, ranked as one of the best movies of all time, and even if he might prefer, say, you know, Apocalypse Tower, Casablanca, I'm assuming like that goes into it a little bit because you're trying to put the best list together. But no, I mean, these are actually, I would say, Emily's has got more substance in some yeah. ways, but Liam has more texture, right? Interesting. Interesting. Well, I'll tell you why. Yeah. If, you, if, you, if you think about it, the fact that he's got Citizen Kane gives him quite yeah. an ace right there. I'll give right, because I have 25 points, I'll give Emily 10 off the bat, just because I feel like I would watch those movies. If I had to pick like which 10 I would watch, okay. Okay. In a, not in a row, but let's say a weekend, I would pick Emily. So I give her 10 points okay. off the bat. Okay, yeah. So here's points. what I'm going to do. I'm going to go with, out of the 50, oh, well, no, oh, you have 25. No, but, okay, out of the 25, I'm going to go, I'm going to go 10 to Liam to start oh, off with. Why? Because he gets, I'll tell you what, he gets Citizen Kane. Um, the Empire Strikes Back, and The Dark Knight, which I think gives you a mix of like the classic and what the Mojo Hall looks like. And I think that's pretty smart. And then you got things like Apocalypse Now and On the Waterfront, which are nobody would be surprised to see on such a list. So we each have what, 15 points left? Yeah, 15. Right. What are you gonna do with the last, your last 15? You go. Okay, you now go I'm gonna give Emily 10 right off the bat, mm -hmm. because similarly, I mean, two of my favorite movies are at seven and six on her list. I would then say, you know, that Emily, you get 10 points just for, you know, the substance. Those are some, so I'm left with five points. You still have, I believe, 15. I have 15. Okay, so I, I would give Emily 10 and my last to Liam five, just because of Mulholland, Mulholland Drive. It's just weird. It's like the Mojoholics wouldn't like it. They would freak out. They. I don't understand. Wait, this They're wasn't just roads movies. we like to drive on, right? And this is, I'm, no, I'm kidding, I'm joking, I'm joking. Okay, so. so that was my last one. You like to okay. drive on the water I have five left. Yeah, five. I have, have five two, left. You can do whatever you want. No, now the last five, to be fair, well, I think these are two great lists. I saw Citizen Kane for like the third time very recently, so very fresh after reading the uh, William Randolph Hearst bio. The last five I'm going to give to Emily. I think everything being fair, she does have the better list. Do you, which list do you think the Mojoholics would like? <laughs> the Mojoholics yeah. are a very nuanced and textured <laughs> yeah. crowd. I think, okay, realistically, I think despite the fact that you got Empire Strikes Back and The Dark Knight, I do think if you just literally like 
checklist out of 10, how many the Mojoholics would expect to see, I would say Emily's list. Yeah. Okay, so <laughs> if I'm counting correctly, that means that uh, Liam ends up with a total of 35 points, Emily ends up with a total of 50 points, <gasps> making Emily the round, the season one <laughs> outranked champion. Yeah. Well yeah. done. Yeah. Well Thank done, you. Emily. You. you get to keep your job. Liam, security <laughs> will escort you out. Nah. <laughs> uh, guys, thanks so much. Hold on. We've got a surprise. Emily, this is for you. It's for me. Wait for it. Something is coming out. Is Leah going to tell me something? <laughs> this is Amy. Okay, Ooh. Emily, this is for you. <gasps> Yay! Hello. This is the grand finale. No trophy, Yay! no cash prize, but bubbles. <coughs> Ephemeral <laughs> and prismatic. <laughs> Those are all the words I know. Guys, uh, thanks for watching. Ash and Christine, thanks for yeah. doing this. Liam, congratulations. Emily, even bigger congratulations. More sincere congratulations, frankly. <laughs> uh, thanks for watching. Like, comment, subscribe. Tell us what your favorite top 10 uh, movies, uh, you know what I mean. Tell us whose list you thought was better. Uh, like, comment, subscribe for more great outrankery and top 10s. Peace, thanks everyone, bye. <laughs> Yay. Check out these other great clips from WatchMojo and subscribe for new videos every day.